Most gardeners talk endlessly about compost, worms, or manure, but the real powerhouse working silently beneath our feet is fungi. Without fungi, organic matter would simply pile up in a dry, fibrous mess. It's these rotting fungi, decomposers, that break plant material into dark, crumbly humus. And here's the surprising part. You don't need a forest floor to encourage them in your garden. With a few simple steps, you can create the perfect fungal playground that transforms stubborn soil into rich, living earth. If you stay with me for the next few minutes, you'll learn exactly how to set the stage for fungi that rot down waste and build humus faster than almost any other soil life. Fungi thrive on carbon-rich materials that most gardeners overlook. The first rule of building a fungal-rich environment is to feed them properly. Unlike bacteria, which thrive on quick sugars like fruit scraps or green grass, fungi prefer tough, carbon-heavy materials. Think wood chips, straw, cardboard, shredded stems, and dry leaves. These materials contain lignin and cellulose, which fungi are uniquely equipped to break down. When you lay down a thick layer, say 2 to 3 inches, of these carbon sources on your soil, you're providing the buffet that fungi crave. For a balanced mix, use about 3 parts woody or dry material to 1 part softer greens. For example, if you add 3 buckets of wood chips, mix in 1 bucket of fresh weeds or kitchen scraps to give fungi both long-term food and a touch of nitrogen to keep the process active. Moisture and air decide whether fungi thrive or die back. Every gardener knows organic matter won't decompose without moisture, but fungi in particular require steady, damp conditions to colonize. Too dry and their mycelium strands retreat, too wet and they suffocate. The key is to keep your mulch or compost layers moist, like a wrung-out sponge. One of the easiest methods is to water your wood chip or straw layer deeply once and then cover it with a thinner mulch, such as grass clippings, to lock in that moisture. Some gardeners even pour diluted compost tea or a weak molasses solution over carbon layers to jumpstart fungal activity. A ratio of one tablespoon of molasses per gallon of water poured over a pile creates just enough sugar to activate microbial partners without overwhelming the fungi. Add airflow by avoiding piles that are too compacted. Fungi need oxygen pathways to weave their threads. The fungal mat is the bridge to stable humus. When conditions are right, Fungi form visible networks, often showing up as white threads under mulch or as mushroom caps after rain. This is the stage where lignin is broken down into complex organic compounds that later stabilize as humus. To encourage this transition, resist disturbing these networks. Unlike bacteria-driven compost piles that benefit from frequent turning, fungal systems thrive in stillness. If you've ever pulled back mulch and seen white mats spreading across wood chips, that is the beginning of humus formation. Simply let those networks work, and over months the chips will darken into soft, humus-rich soil. For raised beds or stubborn clay patches, a fungal layer like this added each season will gradually change the soil texture, increasing drainage and fertility without the need for deep digging. Gardeners can speed up fungal colonization by inoculating materials with existing fungi. This doesn't require expensive products, it can be as simple as using a shovel of soil from a wooded area, or an old compost heap rich in fungal threads. Spread this soil over fresh wood chips or cardboard and water it in. The spores and fragments will take hold quickly in their new carbon-rich home. Another step is to bury partially rotted logs or branches directly in garden beds, a practice sometimes called hugelkultur. These logs act as long-term fungal reservoirs, slowly releasing humus-building compounds as they decay. Adding fungi-friendly plants like clover, vetch, or even ground cover perennials nearby helps maintain the balance, since their roots exude sugars that attract fungal partners. Practical examples of fungal systems in gardens today. One gardener with heavy clay soil might lay down a 4-inch wood chip mulch in fall, inoculate it with old compost, and keep it damp with occasional watering. By spring the chips are laced with white threads, and the soil underneath begins to crumble instead of clump. Another might fill a trench with logs, cover them with two buckets of straw and one bucket of kitchen scraps, then water it in. Over the following season that trench becomes a fungal highway feeding the plants above it. Even a simple layer of shredded cardboard under mulch can encourage fungi to form a mat that locks in moisture and releases humus steadily over time. The beauty of this approach is its simplicity. 
Fungi are nature's recyclers, and once conditions are right, they work without supervision. Their breakdown process creates stable humus that resists erosion, holds nutrients, and keeps soil alive for decades. By feeding them carbon, keeping their habitat moist, inoculating when possible, and giving them stillness to weave their networks, any gardener can tap into one of the most powerful soil-building forces on Earth. If this guide has given you new insight into the easy way to encourage rotting fungi that build humus, make sure to subscribe to Hydro Haven and share this video with other gardeners. The more we bring back these fungal allies, the richer and more resilient our soils will become for generations.